G'day guys, I'd like to thank you for joining us in our Outer Line in Cape York series. It's been over 20 years since we've wanted to do this trip and finally, it's done. But it didn't come without its cost. It started with problems, it finished with even bigger problems, but I guarantee every bit in between is going to keep you thoroughly entertained. I just want to take a moment before we start the video to say thank you to the guys who have jumped on board with us for this series. I know as the channel grows, companies want to become involved and sometimes the viewers will not like that because uh, the channel changes and stuff like that. I guarantee you, we ain't going to change for nobody. But when some great companies like these ones behind me want to become involved with your channel, you grab it with both hands as we have. I put all these guys' products through the absolute ringer up in Cape York and I can honestly say I'm over the moon with how they all went. It's refreshing for me to be able to promote their products and have the confidence in them that they won't let you guys down. For a left, number one, service my outboard motor. The creeks we went to are super remote and a long way from any sort of help. So I took it down to the boys at Marine Care Queensland. They got it serviced, they're super thorough. I worked for them for a couple of months. The job they do is amazing and that's where I go to get my motor done and I'll have every confidence in the world that it's gonna get me home. Black Bear tires. I've got a set of 35 inch muddies on my car and I've got a set of 32 inch rugged terrains on the trailer. As you'll see over the next six weeks, I put these things through absolute hell, running minimal pressures in them over some really shitty corrugations and I couldn't be happier with how they've performed over the whole trip. Race Wheels Australia and Method Race Wheels. What else do you say about Method Race Wheels? They are the best rims you can get, in my opinion. They look awesome. They handled everything I threw at them. And the amount of dirt roads we did, which was upward of 1,500 kilometres on dirt roads, there's not one chip on any of the rims. So I'm super happy with that. Off-Road Creative, the masterminds behind our canopy and our front bar on Sylvie. Honestly, I, I don't even have anything to say about that. It is the best canopy I've ever seen. We have not had one drama with it. I just, I'm in love with it. Brad and Kaz, you know you guys, how much we think of you guys. It's just awesome. I can't speak any higher of the canopy. You'll see through this video, the thing is just amazing. Deck Armour, Joshy, Chris, uh, we've had a relationship for a long time. The boys come on board with this. They've deck armoured out all our canopy, all up inside the rooftop tent. I've had boats done by the boys. They are the best in the business and they are so good to deal with. We're close mates and yeah, love you boys. You guys are unreal. Aqua Idea. The lights on the back of my boat, you've seen the video that I've done with them, how bright they are. Still, no dramas to date, no water, no condensation inside the lights, nothing. If you want some great quality lights, I can't recommend them highly enough. Honestly, guys, they've been unreal. Sea Addicts boats. Now, as you all know, this isn't a Sea Addicts boat, but my trailer is a Sea Addicts trailer. And still, I haven't seen a trailer that I like more than this. Out of all our gear for the whole trip, the trailer is what went through the most crap out of everything. Carrying this boat, which is not a light boat, over 2,000 kilometers of the worst shitty rutted out roads I've ever been on, this trailer was amazing. I go down there to Brent and the boys at Sea Addicts Boats. I say, I need a fifth wheel option. It's next level and you'll see in this series just how effective it is when you need to get your boat out of the shit. Now, last but certainly not least, Revolution Power Solutions. Dave and the team down there at Revolution, you guys have been so good to us. The lithium set up inside our canopy is next level. Over 400 amp hours, 3000 watt inverter. You're gonna see through this video exactly what this thing can do. I was running the induction cooker, I was running an air fryer, and I was running a pressure cooker all at the same time. It nothing cut out, nothing, it used minimal power. It's just next level what they've done in there. We've formed a great relationship with the guys down there at Revolution. So honestly, uh, if you guys want just a ridiculously set up canopy or whatever in your car, Revolution Power, honestly, you can't go past them. I've got it in my boat, I've got it in my canopy. I've had it in there for a few years now. I have not had one single drama, not a single drama. So Revolution Power, thank you guys so much for what you do for us, you know, how much we appreciate it. Anyway guys, that's enough rambling on from me. I hope you enjoy the next six weeks or so because it is out of this world fishing, camping, four wheel drive adventure. It's the best adventure we've ever been on. Wait till you guys see it, you're gonna love it. Like, comment, subscribe, send us messages. I'll get back to everybody, honestly guys. Hope you enjoy this series, let's do it.
Happy to see a fuel station. Yes. <laughs> Don't care what you pay. I get exactly 350.3 kilometers out of a full tank towing that thing. Yeah. I did say, let's stop and get fuel. Let's not worry about emptying it. He said, no, no, no. I got to see exactly what I get out of yeah. a tank. 350.3. But he pushed it a bit too far and, <laughs> and bled her dry. But now we know. Yeah. Won't do that again, will we? No, we won't. Rescue vehicle. Alright guys, presently we are 10 hours north of Brizzy uh, on our way up to Cape York. Cape York. We're going to Cape York. Finally. We're going to Cape York. <laughs> ben, I'm a proud Queensland boy, very passionate about my state, Queensland, as Sarah is of WA. We've done the Kimberley three times. Yeah. Yep. Three times, which is basically like the Cape York of Queensland. Kimberley's amazing. Never seen Cape York in my own town, my own state. So, um, yeah, buzzing. Very excited. Um, how are you? Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. It's different doing something unknown. I think. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be good to like compare it, I guess, to the yeah. Kimberley as well. Yeah. The Kimberley's ridiculous. Whoever's done the Kimberley, you'll know, like just how special that place is. But. I don't know, up here has a different feel about it, like, I guess you feel a bit more remote up here, or, I don't know. I don't, I, no, I think it's the fact that there's so much dirt probably makes it feel remote, but then there's so many more people. Yeah, well, yeah, true, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's very busy up here, like, especially tally track and all that. We're doing something a little bit different than that, like, we watch a lot of YouTube too, and it's awesome, we love watching people do the trally, tally track and that. We'd love to do it, but we decided to tow the boat up. Our boat is way too big to pull through there. So we've got the boat behind us. We're going right up to the tip, and then we're going down the west coast, down through the gulf. So the trip's been really good so far. 10 hours, it's been minimal traffic, really not many cars. No, not for, know, yeah, for a Saturday, it's really quiet. For a Saturday, yeah. But we did run out of fuel once already, and very close, <laughs> nearly run out a second time. Between Marlborough and Serena, there's like 140, 150 k's of no servos and no warning. I had half a tank at Marlborough. I was like, nah, it should be right. It will be sweet. <laughs> and then we got there with about 20 k's, 25 k's to spare. So we got the rescue vehicle behind us. Uh, we got Cody with us, Jetty Rat, the oldest Jetty Rat of them all. He's no Cody. Yeah, we got Cody's good mate Tommy. So Tommy works on the tugboats and stuff like that. And those two boys have been frothing to get up here. So they're in the car behind us at the moment. Um, chewing next to no fuel. Chewing next to no fuel in the D-Max. I think they've like filled up once. And they've still got like three quarters of their next tank left. So <laughs> meanwhile, I've gone through like five tanks. I'm chewing 28 litres to the 100 at the moment. So Yeah, a lot of you asked that. Yeah, 28 litres to the 100 ohm, and we're, you know, got the canopy, 35 inch tyres, towing a boat. Uh, so, you know, we've we've got a bit of weight there. Anyway, we might cross over to the boys, eh, and yeah. see what they're doing. <laughs> Coates, you awake, mate? Yeah, I'm awake. How you feeling? Uh, not really driving at the moment, but I'm, but I'm all right, you know, I'm getting there. Tommy's been doing the hard yards, eh, 10 hours non-stop so far. How are you feeling, Tommy? Oh mate, I'm feeling awesome. Ready for a keen trip and always a bit of a drive, but you know, it's always worth it. So Coates, uh, before this, what was the furthest north you've ever been in your life? Probably 1770 with you. <laughs> 1770 with me. 1770 yeah. with me is the furthest Cody's ever been north. Have you ever seen a crocodile in real life? Australian Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Australian Zoo? So not in the wild? No, nah, not in the wild. Have you ever caught a barramundi? Yeah, in a, at Bwai Bwai though, but it was only a little rat. At the Barra Park, <laughs> he caught a <laughs> Right, Righto, well that's all about to change, mate. You reckon? <laughs> I guarantee it. On your word, I guess. If you don't see a crocodile or eat a barra, I'll eat an eyeball. 
<laughs> Boys, we're going to um, try and make it to Bowen today. So we've got three hours left and uh, we should be there. Yeah, that's not too bad. Considering I'm not driving, but yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. righto. Well, uh, we'll touch base soon, eh? Yeah, over and out. Alright, so I've had our first stop of the morning just south of Air. Uh, it's very early, very foggy. Copping a lot of bugs on the front. And our first bird. <laughs> it's uh, pulled the guard out already, so she's right. Get the feathers out, whatever else is in there. And she'll clip back in. We are five hours drive into the second day now and uh, we're coming past somewhere that I've looked at on maps and that a million times and that's Hinchinbrook. It's like absolute fishing mecca apparently and somewhere like we will definitely come back to, yeah? Yeah, definitely. I wouldn't even put it past if the weather was really crap up in the Gulf, bypassing the last few days and beelining back here if it looked alright but hopefully we... Um, get the good weather up there the whole time we'll come back here and visit again soon but we're just coming into Cardwell now and oh wow look at that <laughs> how's the weather yeah. you can see why this place got so messed up from Cyclone Yazi mm. water was coming over here and everything says was saying she was actually in Yazi living in Townsville so Hiding under the bathroom. Uh. Yeah, hiding in the bathroom. <laughs> so anyway, this is unreal, and the, the weather is amazing. What do you reckon, boys? Hinch and Brook. Yeah, mate, she's beautiful here. Yeah. I've only heard stories about how good the fishing is here. Big crab. Oh, mate, I can only imagine. Waterfront view, water comes right up. It's just awesome. A little jetty there. You can probably catch good fish just off there. I reckon you catch anything off that thing. Well, next stop is what? Cairns, a couple hundred kilometres away. You were going to stop for fuel, but... Yeah, very excited, mate. Only a couple hours. Righto, well, um, I don't want to risk fuel anymore, so I'm on uh, just over half, uh, just over quarter of a tank. We might stop in the very next servo we see, eh? Yep. Alright, mate, yeah. sounds good to us. Ooh, look who's towing the big rig. <laughs> How you feeling? Good. Confident. Finally in control. Finally in control. <laughs> yeah, well, you're doing a good job. Thanks. My fuel usage seems to be climbing up since she's been driving. She's into it. Oh, overtaking lanes. Snorkel's cool. Richie, radius fabrications. Amazing job on the snorkel. Have a listen to this. So a couple of hours later then from when we last seen ya and um, this is a spot I've seen a lot of people on YouTube at. So I'm always like, I wonder what it's like in real life. It's Bob's lookout. We're all getting a little bit excited now because we're getting in the thick of it. Hey boys, <laughs> phones are out. Pretty cool. There's uh, a lot of white rabbits everywhere, but there's even a brown rabbit over there. <laughs> that's a bit yuck. Anyway, it's a scenic place to shit, that's for sure. <laughs> Not that any of us did, but yeah. yeah. Really don't want to jinx anything, but pretty happy with how everything's going so far. The bearings are staying it's nice and lukewarm. Car's going good. Everything's going right on your end, boys. Yeah. So far, so good. So far, so good. We're not in Cape York yet. Not yet. But we're getting close. A few people have said Lakelands is like where you can say you're in Cape York. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I have a bit more of a look on the Instagram poll, but yeah. 
Palmer River Roadhouse. Over the cattle grid. We just spoke to the lady then, and they're open here till 10 o'clock that night. So they're the, the latest open roadhouse. You're out this way. Good, your way. Out of all of them. So if you're hanging for fuel, Palmer River Roadhouse. We're about 50 k's from Laura now, and that's what we're going to call Cape York, aren't we? Um, I thought we were saying Lakeland. Okay, Lakelands, whenever we get there, that's Cape York. We're not far, that's for sure. It's definitely hot enough now to have ice blocks, <laughs> which is great. You bloody ripper. It's been a while. It's been a big drive. We've still got a long way out of us, but um, <laughs> we're here. This is it. We're in Cape York. <laughs> Just went from um, <laughs> just went from uh, <laughs> corrugations are hectic already. The trail is never going to be the same, Brent. <laughs> Hope Codes has got a uh, paper filter because <laughs> there's a lot of dust. Excuse me, mate. Yeah, how far to uh, Musgrave Station? 20k? Yeah, beauty, cheers. One thing I do worry about is like rocks smashing the windscreen because a windscreen on a Chevy is extremely hard to get. So that would be a major. So any big trucks like that, we're gonna pull over on the side of the road, just let them pass and then keep going got some advice from the worldly traveler here next to me. Oh, thank you. For once, you're listening. This is great, but this is really, really good. Really enjoying this. We're about uh, 25 k's out from Musgrave Roadhouse. I was hoping to get there a little bit earlier, but yeah, it's, it's gonna be another, uh, what, 12 hour day? 13 yeah. yesterday, 12 today. Big trip, towing the boat, everything. Latches, there was a bit of dust getting in, so got me toolkit there. That pulls in nicely now. We got a lot of dust ahead of us. Hey. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm driving after it. She'd be right. on this road it's out of control so I want to spot them as best I can but that's pretty cool having that little side light to be able to see directly beside your car Sitting here, yeah, just back on the bitumen between um, dirt roads, 
come around the corner, massive Brumby just sitting in the middle of the road. <laughs> wow, well, gotta be careful. just stopped into the Arch River Roadhouse just to fuel up again. The next one north of here apparently is uh, Bramwell Station. So that's 165 k's away. Uh, well, I'm going to risk running out of fuel again. It's very expensive for food there. So I think Cody bought us small chips and it was like $15 for hot chips. It was $6.50 for a Magnum ice cream. <laughs> but um, it's beautiful around here. See the nice little rivers really starting to get really nice but um so we've got like a five and a half hour drive from here and that's it we're at Bamiga which is pretty much where we're gonna stay Punsan Bay um, and that's pretty much in the northern tip of Australia so five and a half hours of what the motorbike riders told us is really shitty road from here on there's parts of bitumen parts of dirt but the parts of dirt are really rutted out corrugated and stuff like that so See what happens, drive the conditions, and hopefully we get there um, in good time before dark. So you can tell it's predominantly easterlies up here because the left-hand side of the road there is red as, and the right-hand side's green as. <laughs> That's hilarious. This is the uh, upper reaches of the Wenlock River here. Heard a lot about this river says that she can see fish down there jp she reckons anyway we're uh still making our way north to bramwell station to put some more fuel in and it's gonna teet on teeting on Nah, just joking. We go on the bypass track. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing. Mate, you'd be in trouble there. Yeah, there again, telegraph track right there, Coates. Go do it. Go take it down gunshot. Yeah, I will. I got this thing about 20 metres in and that was it. <laughs> We've seen this a lot Crazy. of times, haven't we? That's how it starts. Yeah. Just there. Just a little old track. It's <laughs> a little old track. That leads into big scary track. Yeah, Hey, legend. Good. How are you, mate? Good. Bloody good to see you. Come, on, mate. Show us the damage. Well, we've done pretty good so far. Yeah, mate. There's been one bit of carnage, <laughs> but uh, gunshot, that, Palm Creek. We've done Palm Creek. We couldn't do the chicken tracks because we're too wide. <laughs> we've done. So you had to send it. We had to send it. We've done uh, gunshot. Gunshot. Um, we couldn't do the tight gunshot, but they're not much better, even the easy one. Yeah. Um, the big rig's been doing it That's all. A, it's it's huge it's we're, we're big and then this is <laughs> next level like if you're mad enough to drive it she'll go there this is me standing next to it you've done pretty good mate i've seen on your instagram like this look i thought Couple that was going to be a mess but far out no no she's um not too bad eh well slick as paid for itself mate it's the best best <laughs> mod you can do hands down you've done well Yeah, so we just stopped in at Bramwell Station. It's where everyone just goes for their pre-telegraph pre beers. Pre-telegraph and... beers and everything. Nighttime probably goes off there, but um, yeah, it's a pretty cool old little uh, station pub slash what's the end to see uh, where the telegraph track starts. Oh man, I'd love to do that. We've already said we'll be back to do that, but this one's more about bringing the boat up, seeing how sort of 
silly places we can get this boat into. But anyway, it was cool to see Greggy and a couple of the other boys there that we know from back home. So that was good. Greg's pushed that GMC to the limits, that's for sure, and minimal uh, damage. So I'll um, put up a couple of photos here of where he's took that thing. This is what we've got to be careful of, cars like this. Absolutely flying along. Flying along and nearly everyone flicks rocks at your windscreen. We've already got a chip within three or four minutes from Bramwell Station. The windscreens on these cars are insanely hard to get. So that's one thing that I'm like, we smash this window, we're gone. Like, so anyway, I just pull over to the side, let them go past. They're all hooking like. <laughs> See? Every time. So yeah, that's one thing on our minds, eh? Hey? Yeah, definitely. You said you like the windows down. I like the windows down. <laughs> but that's a trip killer, that. That's end of trip. Yeah. Imagine that's the windscreen being smashed in like. Oh, that's not even contemplated. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're getting right up there now. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. We're like, how far are we from the Jardine River Ferry? About 50 k's now. 50 k's from the Jardine River Ferry. EC off-road. Kale hooked us up with, uh, so this is Hema Maps. Kale hooked us up with this little thing here. It's just a little Android, whatever it is, plugs into your USB. Back on the corrugations. Gives you YouTube, Netflix, Hema Maps. There's Fruit Bat Falls just there. It's the one that you all see where everyone's swimming around on the little uh, drop-offs with the waterfalls and stuff like that. So we're just straight past. <laughs> <laughs> straight past. No rest. We've pulled up uh, on the side of the road about 100 metres north of the Elliott Falls turn-off just to go over everything, just a once-over, make sure everything's okay. It was pretty ruddy back there um, yeah it was quite rough but so far I don't want to jinx anything I could not be happier with how this car is performing the suspension is worth every single cent this remote res suspension that EC off-road put on BDS Fox suspension is next level I now see why you spend a lot of money on suspension very important <laughs> she's proper dirty now look at my light bar <laughs> Love it. Great. The only thing you need to tighten is the shackle. Everything look alright. So I put zip ties around this. Also a zip tie around here because in no time, that was nearly rattled out last night. Everything else is good. Uh, check all the tyres. Have a look at the motor. Tie downs are all tight. Look at that. They've stayed tight this whole trip. Yeah, so we're in strife, big strife. I've just done a once over on the trailer. Oh. We've snapped both of these on the yeah. swivels. My leaf spring is up into the bottom arm here. That's really bad. On this side too. We've also snapped this one. Is that really, really bad? Really, really bad. All right, guys, I want to pause the video there for two seconds. Later on, I found out that the main cause for this problem was because my U-bolt nuts had rattled loose over all those corrugations. They're the one thing I didn't check. I checked them before we left, and they were all good. I thought the spring washers would be okay. Turns out it wasn't. They've loosened up and allowed that whole mechanism to move. What that's done is acted like a coke can and snapped that whole area out. Didn't even break at the weld. It ripped that whole metal out of the whole gel plate. So that's a massive oversight on my behalf. You live and you learn, but guys, if you're gonna tow a boat this size, that far, make sure you've got locking nuts on top of your already existing nuts on your U-bolts. Anyway, back to the show. Major issues here. Just grab that whole toolkit. 
in the hammer. Righto, so almost wore through this aluminium. I've got to get another 60 kilometers to Bamiga. Oh no, more, almost 100 k's to Bamiga. I'm hoping, I jacked it up because it's sitting up here, I've flipped it over. I've got this steel plate here. I haven't got any more plate I can put between this and that. I just don't really know what to do. I've got to hope that that doesn't wear through. Same as that one. So we're in a bit of strife at the moment and we're in the middle of nowhere. No reception, no nothing. So I've just seen something else now. We're pretty much screwed. Like, I, I can't fix this here. The tires, the whole axle has moved over probably an inch. And that bolt up there is gonna be rubbing on the tire. The boat needs to come off the trailer. The trailer needs to come off the ground. Axles have to be moved back over. All that has to be re-welded. Cape York has f***ed us good and proper. We just crossed the, I think it was the Bamiga River on the ferry, the cable ferry. Just got a couple problems with uh, the trailer. We've split off from Bowie and uh, we're going to head straight to Bamiga, try and see if we can uh, find a welder that can weld, hopefully, Bowie's trailer tonight or late Sarvo. So yeah, we've got a quite a punch to get there. You know, we're just trying to get there as quick as we can. You know, as safe as we can as well. Yeah. You know, we don't do anything too stupid. But, you know, yeah, it's just not an ideal situation, but it's what happens, you know? Like, yeah. some that stuff you just can't control, like, you know, like, so it's always good. But, we just see what we can do for him. And we're hoping we can just this guy can get it done tonight because if he can, it's way better for us, way better for everyone yeah. to get back out of the water as soon as we can. So, yeah, it's always good. Oh, uh, well, shit happens, I guess. Right, so we've just limped 30 kilometres to the um, Jardine River Ferry. Uh, says he's gone in to buy a ticket to get over on this ferry. The bad part was this ferry closes after today for two days maintenance so if we didn't limp the trailer here and make it over the other side um, we were proper screwed so we've been going like 5 k's an hour you know and then up to 40 then back to 5 it's been really hard going really 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 corrugated ruddy shit roads um, so yeah it is what it is that road is just just <laughs> yeah it's it's crazy 540 kilometers of basically rutted uh, crap. Here's the ferry just down here. We've then got 50 kilometers to get to the nearest town that could possibly help us. $175 bucks for a car and boat. This is literally how fast we're going at the moment. Corrugations are endless and, um, oh. So we keep taking these little side tracks down off the side of the road. Sometimes we can get up to 20 kilometers an hour. And then, yeah, we're back to like two or three, four kilometers an hour. We got 40 Ks to get to Bamiga. We've sent the boys up further. They're gonna go talk to like a tow mob or a welder up there just in case we can't get there today if we can't we'll have to try and sleep on the side of the road here or sleep on the road here or um yeah try and find a washout or something but we'll keep his posted not in a real good situation at the moment that's for sure we've been punching out massive days of driving last two last three days to get up here in good time in the arvo and we would have been up there by now and booked in and had a look at the beach so we could launch the boat tomorrow, but um, instead, yeah, we're doing this, but anyway, we'll get through it and then this will be a little blimp on our radar in a couple of days, hopefully. <laughs> You're hopeful. Yeah. Mm. We'll be right. 
All right, we've made it to some bitumen. Ah, well, I think we have. Is it? Is it bitumen? <laughs> Please be bitumen. Still 20 k's out of Bamiga. Oh my God, I'm so happy to see some bitumen. Wow. That's it now to Bamiga, wow, isn't wow. it? I think so, yeah. It was 100 meters of bitumen. <laughs> Now we're back on the dirt. It was literally like looking to the horizon thinking you see water. Yeah. Literally. And it was like thinking you see 25 kilometres of bitumen and it was 100. We're doing 13 kilometres an hour. Are we believing it this time or is it we're, a mirage? We're on the bitumen now and it goes for at least 100 metres. <laughs> oh, I'm happy with 110. Here we go, ready? Different now. Uh, we're closing in on it. That's where we are, nearly at the tip of Australia. Well, that's it guys. Join us next week as we sort through our trailer problem. We make it to the water and a little bit more water. We squeeze Sylvie into some places that she probably shouldn't be squeezed. We wrangle up some giant mud crabs in the croc waters. And no boat, no problems, as Cape York starts to show us what it's all about. And something big happens at the tip. See you next week, guys. If you enjoyed this episode and are keen to see more, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and check us out on Facebook and Instagram.